Welcome to the topic on HCC TV. This is a program where we highlight Houston Community College, our students, our programs, and our reach into the community. Glad to have you with us today. If you're watching us on HCC TV, make sure you follow us in social media under Houston Community College District. You can also find us on YouTube. Our channel is located under Houston Community College. Make sure you subscribe to that YouTube channel and you get notifications when shows like this are just posted. We also have podcasts available. If you want to download the audio versions of our podcasts, you can go to hccs.edu slash podcast. We've got a show today talking about digital IT and cyber networking. We're going to have information coming up, especially on a free program that you can sign up for. It'll get you out there in the workforce with a very useful trade. You know, the COVID pandemic has made all of us more reliant on information technology that has created a brand new need or a more justified need for computer support personnel. Samir Saber, the program director for continuing education, information technology at HCC's Digital Information and Technology Center of Excellence. Long title, but he's here to join us to tell us about a brand new program. Good afternoon, Samir. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Todd. Thanks for having us again. Um, yeah, this, this is an amazing opportunity for up to 54 students. We're really hoping to spread the word. Um, it's basically, it's uh, training to be help desk kind of technicians, um, computer support specialists is the official kind of title, but it's, it's basically entry level IT. Um, so it, um, it's tailored for residents of Harris County that have been impacted by COVID-19, either um, they, they have to be unemployed, um, so they have to show a certain low income bracket or no income. Um, but yeah, the, the training um, is, is very good. It's about $1,600 worth of value. It's got all the instructor-led training, the hands-on labs, the, the books, the, exam vouchers to actually get the certification. So it prepares, like I said, um, just for entry level jobs to, to get them quickly in the field. Um, great opportunity. We had a guest talking about this on one of our other shows most recently, and, it, and it's a phenomenal opportunity. As you mentioned, this is designed for uh, Harris County residents, Houstonians in particularly, who uh, have may have lost their job through COVID. And I guess a lot of folks may ask, is it is it going to cost me anything? You kind of went through it, but there is there any cost for me? And how long would it take for someone who's out of the workforce right now to get retrained, get certified, and get out there in the workforce? It is fully paid for, so there, there's nothing the students would have to pay. They just have to to get all the documentation, and if they qualify, um, you know, we'll, we'll get them included. So it's the training is four weeks. It starts on November 16th, runs through December 18th. One week off on Thanksgiving. It's going to be two two separate uh, two different camps going going on in tandem. Um, so so since the students get all the material that lasts for at least a year, including the vouchers, they'll have plenty of time to at least get certified um, and to also find a job. And there is there is a job placement piece to all of that through our partnership with Capital Idea. They they will have um, job coaching, job training, uh, and even a career fair. So that is part of the, the grant um, or the funding, so. Well, you know, a lot of folks are, are, are concerned about working in an office. Are these jobs where people can work remotely or are they, uh, uh, do they have that aspect to them or, or are they gonna need to go out into a physical environment? How does that work? It's mixed right now, but of course, due to the COVID-19, everything so much is going digital, remote working. So, and of course, it's not just about working in the industry for a given employer, it's about supporting you know, a lot of ISDs and, and, and smaller companies are just looking for, for help, you know, uh, remotely. So I would say uh, small consulting gigs on the side, too, would be a, a nice way for students or anyone to just to get in there. Um, so, yeah, right, right now is a good time to get trained, get some practice, um, especially given everything that's going on. This program is four weeks and you can go then get a certification. Is there an opportunity? Is it stackable to where they can continue on at HCC and it could maybe be used towards a two-year uh, program? Yeah, it's, it's a great feeder. Um, the, the course specifically industry-wise is one of the most renowned in terms of entry level where you learn a lot about operating systems and hardware. So basically troubleshoot anything computer related, cloud security, all that kind of good stuff. But, but like you said, it does, it does transfer directly with some of our programs. So if they want to get into our level one IT course certificate, for example, or Microsoft Drive or cybersecurity, 
um, it, it would we would be able to provide prior learning assessment through uh, to get actual credit. Well, it sounds like it could be something where you could take the four week program, go out, get some employment, but you could also be uh, maybe taking classes on the side as well to continue working and going to school at the same time if you wanted to move on and increase your earning potential. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, speaking of earning potential, you know, right now, um, the, the job growth for those kinds of jobs, they were predicted to be 8% growth for the next 10 years. And that was last year's 10 year, uh, you know, pr projection. Right. So I'm sure it's going to change. Um, but in, in short, there's there, the medium pay right now for those kinds of jobs, is actually 55 K a year um, wow. in, in the U S and so it's really good. And, and, and that's, that's for basically entry level kind of technician jobs. Now you have other niche special specialties and, you know, networking and cybersecurity and those, those are just going up. So the, the program itself is for a computer support specialist. It's a training program. What type of jobs could you go out there and find with that type of certification? So anything that's around help desk, technical support specialist, computer repair technician, you know, th those kinds of um, jobs, their entry level, then they basically lead into other potential such as analyst positions, engineer, um, architect, and then you have, of course, different levels in each and team leads. So um, a lot of different areas it can get into, but it's, it's a great starting point. And that's why it's so valuable because we're really trying to get people out there and, and, and in the field. Some people may be finding themselves um, losing their jobs in the oil and gas industry. You know, it's been hit particularly hard. And a lot of those jobs that people may have had for, for decades aren't coming back. Would this be a good transition into a growing field? I mean, some workers are really in the last stretch of their, of their employment careers. You know, they're aging. But would this be something you could learn and can, uh, could continue if you're a worker, say, in 35 or plus range? Yeah, uh, you could. So, so for the uh, oil and gas industry, especially in Houston, you know, there's a huge need for anything that deals with industrial control systems, IT, security, especially. But anything that's around those kinds of old dated machines or you know PLCs and whatnot. The interesting thing that we're doing with um, the Advanced Manufacturing Group, um, since they're big on providing the certified production technician track, which is basically you can think of it as a marriage between your traditional uh, technicians that deal with those actual systems and, and the IT side. So they're adding um, things like automation, AI, security, logistics, programming. So it's, it's like a convergence of the two. So we're, we're finding a lot of synergies there between the faculties and we're building additional training for that. Now, you're in the continuing education department. Um, for folks who may be interested in other uh, divisions, what other uh, type of programs are available through CE? So, of course, the most in demand right now is anything like we discussed, like the A+, plus, you know, A plus certification the, for help desk and those kinds of jobs, um, net, networking fundamentals, security fundamentals, um, Another course that's very popular right now is, is, is the one that gets you certified to be a drone operator to pass the FAA yep. 107 exam. You know, that's a good one. And we're, we're planning to add additional courses on that front to, to create a series. Um, yeah, it's, of course, CCNA, um, what else? AI courses, things around 3D additive manufacturing, um, Microsoft Office kind of courses. And for folks who are interested in learning more about those courses, we'll put the pertaining links in the social media part of this show, uh, in the social media post for the show. Samir, I want to have you stick around, if you would, please. Uh, we're going to interview someone next. We're going to learn about our cybersecurity program here at HCC. A lot of opportunities there as well. Stick around. More coming up on the time. 150 over 90. 180 over 111. 160 over 110. I had a stroke. Your blood pressure numbers could change your life. Lowering them could save you from having a stroke. If you've stopped your treatment plan, restart it or talk to your doctor about creating one that works better for you. Start taking the right steps at manageyourbp.org. Now I'm, you know, trying to get better, stronger than ever. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do.
She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. That one day at PE when they were like yelling at me and then you just linked arms with me, I don't think you know how much like that helped me. I finally like knew that I had somebody. Welcome back to The Topic on HCC TV. If you're watching us on the cable channel, make sure you follow us in social media under Houston Community College District. You can check out all our videos. Better yet, hop on over to our YouTube channel. You can find us at Houston Community College and subscribe to it. You can uh, get notifications when shows like this are brand new and just posted. Also, our podcasts are available at hccs.edu slash podcasts. We're talking about IT networking and of course, programs here at Houston Community College. Uh, HCC is making it a little more safer and secure in the cyber world. Of course, that's all because of people like Fidelis Gang. He is the professor and division chair for computer systems, networking and telecommunications. He's joining us to talk about our cybersecurity program. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Todd. So let's talk about the cybersecurity program at HCC. What it entails? Are there certifications? Are there two-year degrees? And can you transfer to a four-year degree? The cybersecurity at HCC, uh, we take the approach of uh, welcoming everybody, uh, people with, with a bit of a background, people without a background. So we have a level one certificate that will only be like 16 hours. Uh, uh, that could be accomplished in a single semester. And then level two certificate, which is about 38 hours, that would take about a year to accomplish. And they will have an associate's degree, which uh, that's 60 hours. That should take about two years, two and a half years. And our degree plans, uh, both the certificate uh, plans and the, the associate degree plan map to industry certifications, such that uh, an HCC graduate living with a level two certificate, for example, or an associate's degree, plus an industry certification, a recognized industry cert certification stands a very good chance of getting hired straight out of school. Can you transfer to a four-year university uh, with these uh, associate degrees? We are a workforce program. It's, so it's a little tricky of making that transfer uh, from uh, uh, workforce programs to a uh, 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 for you, but the answer is yes. And the students that go through our classroom, they're coming, there's, there's two types of students. Those that are looking to accomplish uh, uh, on a credential at HCC and go look for a job, and those that do plan to transfer to four-year universities. So it's, it's, it's important that we determine that early on as they're coming so that we'll put them on the right track. The answer is yes. If you're taking the short-term uh, certification you're talking about, it's, it's literally, you said 16 hours, is that correct? That'll be a level one certificate, correct, yes. Can you then go out and find employment uh, with just that certification? Is that, uh, are you available? To, is it available to do that and are people hiring? Yes. Uh, so with a, le with, with a 16 hour, that's a level one certificate and the best candidate for that certificate would be someone with a bit of a background in the industry. Somebody that already sort of knows what to do and they're trying to add to maybe upgrade or update their knowledge and uh, but they should be able to go out and find a job easily if that were the case. What is the local market like here in the Houston area for cybersecurity personnel? It is great. It is great uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, Houston is a, a population where it's huge. And, uh, and you look at the various sectors, the oil industry, the energy sector, uh, the times we're living now, we've come from sharing data, interconnecting networks to where we are almost too connected. So security becomes the focus of the IT industry today. Whereas 25 years ago, we were looking to connect. Today, we are properly connected. What we need to do is protect uh, 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 sensitive information because you don't want to connect with everybody, even though you want to be connected. So the, the job market is great. Texas Medical Center, the oil industry, the energy uh, sector, energy corridor, we have a lot of graduates out there. 
you mentioned briefly um, just some of the areas that they could work in, but what type of environments would your graduates go work in? Would they physically go working for an oil company? Would they be hired by a hospital? Um, all of the above, how would that work? All of the above, all of the above, and they range from entry-level security technicians to people with, again, with a bit of background and with enough industry certifications that are actually sub-engineers, uh, security operations centers engineers. With that type of degree, um, could our students then, um, you said you can go on from the 16 hour program, you said they could go on to other certifications. As you get more certifications, does that increase your earning potential? Absolutely, it increases your hiring potential and your earning potential by the big amount. Do you guys help find help the students once they get through your program, do you help them find jobs? Correct, uh, HTC has a strong placement program. Uh, we, uh, we have a, a director uh, uh, at the top of this program and we regularly hold career fairs. Uh, my colleague, Professor Saber, you just interviewed, we hold regular information sessions. And at, one of the things we address at those info sessions is the job market and how to get a job and how to be ready and how to get hired. With, since March, we've all been in, you know, working in a whole different environment, and you kind of alluded to that a few minutes ago. Um, how have you guys been able to deliver the education to our students and continue them gaining towards their ultimate graduation from your program um, with teaching and online efforts? It's been a challenge, uh, but fortunately we are the IT department, so we are the people that should be able to handle this the best. So online learning, uh, we have a couple of modalities that we follow with our courses. Uh, we have classes that be entirely online static content and the student logs in at their convenience at the time of their choosing and complete work uh, already uh, uh, pre uh, designated by the, by the professor, by the instructor. And we have online live sessions where students and professors meet live and we have a third option where students can actually go to campus. So if they, in case where they have to do hands-on labs, practice, and those sessions are streamed live into students' homes as well. I'll ask you the same question I asked Samir earlier. Are these jobs ones that uh, uh, students can do remotely once they do graduate, or are they gonna have to go into a, a physical setting or is it a mixture of both? It is a mixture of both. Um, it's not uncommon to have uh, to get employed these days in the IT industry and not leave your home and do a, an, an effective job. But at the same time, you see have jobs where the physical presence of the, uh, of the individual is required. A SOC engineer is best at their work if they're operating within the SOC itself. We're gonna go ahead and take a break. If we could keep you around, Fidelis, we're gonna bring you back along with Samir, and we're gonna talk about how HCC is getting people back to work through partnerships, also, are there jobs out there that you can find in a remote setting as far as the interview process? How is that working? All of that's coming up when we return on the topic. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cooked my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But I get it, you're busy. And busy people can't have prediabetes. Oh, I read that wrong. They can, okay. Just go to the site. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look!
Welcome back to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. If you're watching us on HCC TV, make sure you follow us in social media under Houston Community College District. You can also find us on YouTube under Houston Community College. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll get notifications when shows like this are freshly posted on the internet. We've been talking about getting Houstonians back to work. We've got several programs at Houston Community College that are actually blossoming and are in high demand. And we're gonna talk with uh, right now, Samir Saber. He's the Program Director of Continuing Education, Information and Technology at HCC's Digital IT Center of Excellence. And also we've got Fidelis Gang, who's the Professor and Division Chair for Computer Systems. Thanks again, guys, for both uh, joining us. We've been talking about getting people back to work. But one important thing at Houston Community College are partnerships we have. And you guys have got a partnership uh, involving Goodwill. Maybe you can tell us about that. So it's a partnership where basically, so Goodwill provides free, free training in, in areas that are in high demand to provide them skills and whatnot. Um, so right now we have, we have six areas that we're working with them. Well, actually four areas, um, and, and they're really around more of the advanced manufacturing side. But like I said earlier, a lot of what they're doing is really getting to the IT side. So uh, one of them is that production um, certified technician that I mentioned. Um, other ones are logistics, um, electricians, and uh, construction. So those kinds of skills are in demand. They're, Goodwill is also doing um, some of the IT training. We're not doing that directly. But uh, the Google is one that they're doing. This is something that we'll also be doing. And Samir, you mentioned advanced manufacturing. You know, it was, I guess, the last five years, you kept hearing about advanced manufacturing really taking off in the Houston area. Is that still the case? Um, is it still a hot industry with uh, in-demand jobs that is here in Houston? It is because the, the interesting part with the advanced manufacturing umbrella is that you have a lot of the... Um, kind of like industrial control systems and anything oil and gas sitting underneath there, uh, especially that, that production technician one, um, which is getting revamped into IT. The, the other interesting thing about that, um, since we have an entire campus, you know, the Stafford campus has all these 3D yeah. printing machines, uh, metal printing machines. The, the interesting part what we're able to do, uh, well, the next phase will be to actually build our own robots, drones, um, even print our own circuit boards and, and really create some unique synergies. Fidelis, I want to ask you, and I, I mentioned this before we went into the break, we were talking about the job market. Um, while we're during this time of COVID, are people still hiring right now in this virtual environment? Can you go out, get a job by interviewing remotely and maybe even start that job without even going into an office. Is that happening right now with your graduates? It is happening. Um, in fact, uh, uh, the last couple of months since we've been living through the COVID era, that's pretty much how most interviews have gone. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's, I said earlier, it's challenging. The challenge remains out there. Um, a, a, a lot of companies uh, just are not making the kind of, income that they should make to hire or to have more hires. But for, for certain industries, um, Amazon, for example, hired a few thousand uh, uh, people. They're not local in Houston. We miss out on the uh, second headquarters of Amazon coming to Houston. Uh, but yes, all the interviews can be conducted remotely online uh, with the technology that's out there. So I guess the, the key is don't give up because the jobs are out there. It might take a little longer to find them because there's probably fewer out there, but the jobs are out there and people are still hiring, even though we're, we're, many of us are working remote. That is correct. And uh, there's a couple of needed skills. So this partnership with Goodwill is critical. Uh, there are jobs uh, and training out there that just about anybody uh, can get within a short amount of time and go find a job. Um, the other thing that uh, Sabine so gave most of the things on the goodwill thing, uh, it's designed primarily to help fat struggling families, families that uh, make an annual income of under $37,000 and families that have a dependent of 18 or uh, under 18. And so it's a great opportunity to help families get back on their feet in, uh, in the Houston area. Uh, well, Samir, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Fidelis, because Samir, I was going to ask you about qualifications. 
if someone is interested in this goodwill program, do they need to get a referral for it through like the workforce or can they simply go to your website or do they go to goodwill and get started? They can go either, either through us or goodwill directly. Um, we have the contacts, um, as far as, um, the qualifications, really what, what Fidelis said is, is, um, what we know personally, um, yeah, it's, it's, there are certain requirements for that. It's, um, you have to meet. As far as the continuing education programs, many people may, may not understand the difference between that and what we offer through just HCC's regular programs or the academic programs. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more how the CE programs work. You guys can provide short-term certifications and in many ways, um, is it the same cost as going to HCC to go to the CE programs? How does that work? Do you have to register as a student, um, go through normal admissions? How does that all that process work? Price-wise, it's, it's typically, it's more expensive than, than the credit side, but, but there are funding opportunities. Um, so for example, one of the, the latest um, offerings is it's an occupational skills award. That's a cybersecurity analyst training. That's, so it's four courses, 256 hours. It's TPEG eligible. Um, another thing that I'll mention that I'm glad you, you brought this up is um, something that HC started doing and, and we're IT is, is definitely on doing that is, is micro credentials. So micro credentials, a lot of other you know, four universities we've seen do where it's, it's quick training, quick skills, uh, typically shorter classes, two to three courses, get you the skills you need to find the job you're looking for. Um, um, right, right now, at a time like we're in right now, a lot of students are just looking for flexibility. They're looking yeah. for ways to just be able to, you know, start without having to wait another semester, you know, um, that kind of thing. Are your classes continually starting throughout a normal traditional semester? Do you have them always registering where you may have a class a couple of weeks away that gets, uh, gets started? Yeah, it's, it's on the C side. It's very flexible. So, so we offer free community courses as well. They're called CECs, um, basically workshops that are less than seven hours. And then we offer um, courses that are called CEUs, which are seven hours or more. They can run all the way up to 96 contact hours for one course. And then we have series of, of those courses or even smaller versions that are, you know, micro credentials. So many different formats for, for um, different dynamics. You happen. mentioned also, Samir, that some of the courses have funding that's available for them that will in many cases pay some, if not all of the, the, uh, the, the coursework. Um, can, do they need to go to an advisor for HCC to find this out? Or how would you direct somebody who's thinking, I want to take some classes, but I want to see if there's funding available. Where would they go to find that? So generally, of course, we have that virtual lobby where, you know, anything financial aid, um, students can go through that. HCSOU slash virtual lobby. If, if they want to contact my, my group directly, they can do dit.ce at hcs.edu. Um, like Fidel said, I do info sessions where I bring in the team advisors, the chairs and all that. And, and I kind of give career advice and whatnot. Um, I would say at the end of the day, Houston, like Fidel said, is, is, is just a great place to be when it comes to really networking. So my advice to anyone looking for a job or students is get involved, you know, attend conferences, be part of our student clubs. We have amazing clubs, including Computer Science Association, Women in IT, graphic design, cybersecurity, you name it. Um, that, that is really the way for students to get involved. Um, career fairs, so speaking of career fairs, since we're the Center of Academic Excellence, you know, every year there's a career fair just made for um, basically our students and it happened in September. So it was virtual, you, you had all these um, government agencies there that you could go and chat and, and whatnot. Um, um, so yeah, like I said, conferences, webinars, things like that, just, just get, get involved, get the word out. And that's how you'll, you know, social media, that's how you'll hear about these funding opportunities, right. really. Samir Saber and Fidelis Gang, I appreciate you both joining me on the topic today and uh, shedding some light on this important subjects because we need to do, we need to get people back to work here in Houston. Thank you for being here for the topic on HCC TV. I'm Todd Duplantis and I'll see you again next week.